All right. Yes. Uh, so throttle up. Uh, our existing engine should be off, and that means our ascent engine will ignite once I press space bar. And I'm going this way. I'm going to be going east. All right. Oh no, 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 no. Oh god, no. Okay, that's not what I wanted. Why did that... Stupid, stupid. Well, alright. I'm gonna shut down the ascent engine while that one's going. <laughs> oh, sorry about that, folks. First horrible, horrible fail <laughs> in this. Oh, why when I press face bar, that one ignited? I have no idea. Okay. Well, we have a lot of burning to do anyway, and that one will run out. Nice that at least I can sort of uh, direct it, even though it's not technically part of my craft anymore. So yeah, this is sort of cheating now. Oh wait, I can shut it down right now, can't I? No, I can't, because I staged it and it's on the other side. No, I can't. So I have no choice but to use up all of its fuel. Or unless I slide off or something. Well, consider it a bonus. These don't have fuel in them, by the way. This is the only part that had fuel. Those were just for looks, uh, such as it is. It was so that I could use a smaller decoupler. Okay, so now we can use this engine. There we go. Well, we should definitely be burning like this now. Yeah. That'll do. And we can go to full power. Apoapsis in three minutes. Will that be enough time for this thing to burn? I don't know. Maybe I should tilt up a bit. I don't really need to gain altitude though. I'm trying to correct the inclination. Sorry to be in this view, but I need the numbers. Still not sure I'm going to be going fast enough though. Of course, our ascent profile was not ideal because we had that can doing other things. The the descent stage boosting us. Of course, of course, it does help with us with fuel, uh, but we seem to have plenty of fuel. Uh, though we don't seem to have the right amount of liquid fuel versus oxidizer. That's strange. Should be fine. But we're getting close. Oh god, what if what if rendezvousing takes too long? What if it takes longer than the supplies that I have? We've got five days worth of supplies here and then eighteen days there. I don't know. Looks like I need to tilt up a bit in order to stay kosher. Oh, our ascending node has sort of increased. Oh, okay, it's like that. Okay, we're going off here. Still don't have an orbit. Uh, OK, 
Okay, I think I have to tilt up now. Let's see. I don't want to increase my abolapsis. Uh, still increasing. Okay. The problem is my orbital speed difference between myself and uh, and the command module probably isn't too big. Let's see, uh, what am I? I'm 1650-ish, uh, and it's it's only 5 meters per second difference. Will I be able to catch up before food runs out? I really didn't plan this very well, and I'm, I'm using the hypergolic fuel a little bit too bad. Uh, that's what's lighting my engine for me. Uh, how much do I have here? And now I've got uh, unstable fuel flow. I didn't realize that this one was one of those that gets unstable fuel flow. Let me just check to make sure spinning it. Okay, spinning it helps. All right. Oh boy. All right. Uh, I need to check whether I have hard drive space to continue recording at this point. Uh, and then I'll have to see whether I can catch up to it. So let me pause and check whether I have space to continue recording. And then I will continue the mission. Okay, it looks good on the hard drive space. So let me see how much I catch up on uh, one go around the moon. Looks like it's about an hour around, I think. Alright, let's, uh, well, maybe, yeah, a little bit more than an hour. Alright, let's see. Let me make sure I'm not hitting anything along the way. We are pretty low now. Looks pretty good still. Okay, looks like we're clear on that. But let's see if we can catch up or not. Uh, very thin. Sort of like a little clock. Yeah, how's food? Okay, all right. I think one more go around. Now, send me a device as I say, still. Right, okay, how close are we? 42, I think we can help that out a bit. Uh, we're still we're still gonna be behind, is that right? Okay, so we can probably get there and then fix it. Hope I'm right about that. Okay, so now we have to fix. Come on, you. Point three, huh? Well, that only works if I can make this burn. Let's see, uh, fuel stability. Oh, we're zoomed out again. Okay, there we are. Uh, let's get the lights back on. Oh, we don't have lights on this stage. Haha, <laughs> sorry people. Alright, uh, let's turn around. Okay, very stable. That's not going to last for very long though. Let's find my maneuver node. And light. Point one. Sounds good to me. Let's get close to that.
Okay, that's as close as I want to get right now. Alright, there it is. And I'm going to want to use this engine again to kill our relative velocity. So let's get stable, pointed in the reverse direction. Okay, so that that's fine. Let's get closer then. Oh, now it's unstable. Oh god, did I do too much? Uh, it's like computer throttling back time warp. Okay, I don't know what that means. Um, let's do just a modicum of time warping here. Alright, now, now, okay, uh, joint reinforcement, let me do my thing please. And light. All right, so time to make sure we're between that, turn around, face our target, and RCS time. Hydrazine, bring us in. We've got more than necessary amounts of hydrazine, but but uh, this is how much they carried and it's probably because they needed the hydrazine the RCS uh, system in order to do the land because th I don't think they had reaction these are uh, unrealistic reaction wheels so I don't think they had those helping them out the way I do here and probably a lot of the after they got into orbit, a lot of the maneuvering uh, to get the rendezvous probably used hydrazine rather than the liquid fuel oxidizer, because uh, we got that boost from the from the descent stage that they obviously didn't get, and so they probably would have burned all this off. I don't know why there's an imbalance of liquid fuel oxidizer right here. I'm gonna have to look into that. Now remember, just because I've got liquid fuel and oxidizer here doesn't mean it's going to help me get back because that rocket does not use liquid fuel and oxidizer. It uses xerazine and N204. Of course, I'm going to jump to the command module and have it orient properly. I'm going to assume that the lander is going to be doing all the docking stuff. It might have been the command module in the Apollo missions, but it makes no functional difference. They both can do it. Okay, there we have it. All right, uh, crew transfer first. Let's transfer the crew from the lander can to the command pod and update portraits. Make sure the command pod has everybody. Where's my crew hatch? Is it over here? I keep seeing the little thing say it's crew hatch. Ah, there we go. All right. Now, one thing we can transfer is hydrazine, so let's do that. And we can also transfer food. 
So let's transfer hydrazine back. Oh, uh, this does have uh, liquid fuel and oxidizer to ignite the rocket, but that's it. So uh, I'm not going to transfer the, that stuff for that. I don't foresee having to ignite it that often. Okay, let's get the food and oxygen and everything in. Okay, let me just verify. So, can full of waste, no food. The supplementary pack here still has food. Am I, I've been doing it the wrong way around or something? Come on. Okay, right? In, 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 out. Okay, so I think we've got it all settled. This just has waste, this just has waste. Uh, okay, that's fine. So let's undock. And in reality, this would just uh, have a decaying orbit and smack down in the surface. In Curl Space Program, you don't have that. Um, so it will just have to drift. Meanwhile, our uh, life support situation, we've got nine days left. That looks right. Let's plot back for uh, Kerbin, for Earth. Kerbin, either way. Um, whatever the planet in the center happens to be. Let's say we add a maneuver. Uh, that's not the right way to go. This way. All right, so I, it looks like my stage now has 1,361. I think that's enough to get back. And again, I've never tried getting back before, so I didn't really know whether it'd be enough to get back. Um, I just put the amount of fuel that they said the stage had. And when I say they, I mean Wikipedia. I'm not looking very deeply into this stuff, all right? So I just checked Wikipedia and had how much propellant it had, and that's what I put. Oh, come on. Want to get this right before we reach that point, obviously. The depth in the atmosphere that we should go into, I have no idea. I've played around with uh, the real solar system, but I haven't returned from the moon, so I don't know. And I can't get into orbit. I have to aerobrake there. There's no way uh, with the fuel I have that I can just... Uh, so I'm going to go with 76,000 for now. And then the fine tune it's on the way in. Ooh, what an inclined orbit. Well, it doesn't matter. We're getting back and that's the important thing. Uh, I hope I don't hit any mountains, but that's a side issue at this point. I might not even be able to survive re-entry with these guys, so. I have the parachutes that were specified. The parachutes that were specified were, I think it was, let me see, uh, there's uh, two drogue shoots and three main shoots. And let me first and foremost get those oriented right. So we've got two initial shoots and then three main shoots. I have no idea how they're going to work out. I actually, these are the real shoots pack. And I haven't used the real shoots pack before. So this is my first time using real shoots. I don't know if this is a good idea or not. Okay, uh, we're very stable. 
and let's ignite very good let's make sure we're oriented right and then go faster go much faster honestly I had, I had no expectation that I'd be getting this far in this in this special I was pretty confident that I was gonna smack into the moon or or something like that okay so uh, uncharted territory all the way here Actually, uh, re-entry, the issue isn't the heat shield, uh, I mean the re-entry heat. The heat shield will take care of that. The issue is G-forces. And so I have to make sure that the re-entry is suitably gentle for these guys so they can survive the G-forces. And yeah, that's, that's the trick. That I don't know. The real Apollo missions when returning had a pretty un I mean they skipped along the atmosphere. They actually went into the atmosphere, uh, jumped, skipped off of it, and then descended. I have no idea how to mimic the trajectory properly. I don't know. Yeah, I, there's a lot I don't know about that particular tra trajectory and how to mimic it. Probably if I had expected to be able to bring them back, I I would have looked into it, but Well, let's let's try our best, I guess. Here we go. We have escaped the moon. No, okay, we've gone too far. Um RCS can help us with that. Hopefully. Maybe. I am trying to use... Ah, there we go. Um, let's keep it high. Let's try this whole skipping thing. Let's say 70. Eight. Yeah. All right. Uh, Fraps doesn't like it when I cross spheres of influence. So, so see you on the once we get into Kerbin orbit. Okay, I'm contemplating a retro burn once we get within that satellite range. Our uh, food, water, and oxygen are depleting quite tremendously. You know what? And seems like once we left the moon sphere of influence, our periapsis has dropped already. And it occurs to me that if I don't drop the apoapsis enough, they're going to run out of food, water, and oxygen. How much will it take? Okay. And that gets us, well, one day is a lot. I mean, I don't know how much, we don't, we have about less than five days worth. Um, so that's about the limit, right? 545, 500, let's say, a day. Oh. Well, I mean, of course, uh, once we aero break, it'll decrease that. The air breaking itself will decrease the the orbit. So uh, okay, well this this is decreasing our periapsis too much. Let's fix this burn up. Back to our seventy-five-ish, I guess. All right. Again, I'm just guessing here. I have no idea how much I should do. Uh, 
I don't like the idea of going around, so I'm probably going to dip even closer. Let's say 70. This could be bad, but it's a little bit of a shame if we end up messing up on the return after all of this, but all I can do is what I do. So Okay, 18 hours till that. There's Kerbin. Okay, um, yeah, so spin around, hope that stabilizes the fuel. Go over to this side, check that the fuel is stable, yes it is, so we ignite. We're tilted a little bit radial to the to the retrograde vector because we want to keep our, our periapsis up, right? So that's going to be a thing. And I'm just going to burn off all the fuel. We do have a little bit of uh, hydrazine up here, and I'll transfer to fill that up. So because we do have RCS ports on the top. In fact, uh, in fact, I think the pod itself doesn't have much reaction control, so we will need the RCS to get our orientation right. All right, well that's that. Let me transfer the hydrazine up. I have a lot more hydrazine than I really needed this time. Okay. Our time to apoapsis is 8 hours. That's not bad. I guess now the main question is whether I've misjudged and that the g-forces might uh, harm my poor kerbals. I can still use the stage for RCS, but I don't think I'm going to burn any more. I just gotta try it at 70 and see what happens. So, so yeah, I guess we're just uh, going to be at the whim of uh, Earth-sized Kerbin. Okay, we do have we do have reaction wheel control here. That's good. Let me get rid of the maneuver node. I've probably let go of the service module much earlier than they would have, but uh, not sure about that. going awful fast. 10 kilometers per second still. I wonder when I should use the drogue shoots. On the bright side, we seem to be at least on the bright side and uh, coming over on water. I'm uh, stealing myself because there's a high probability I'm going to be very, very disappointed in the next few minutes.
We are starting to slow down, but it's it's all about the G forces. Okay, crunch time here. Maybe we will go back up, maybe we won't. Probably safer to go back up and then have a second dip. But only if it's like exactly right. Because otherwise we might be coming in too fast on the, sec uh, on the second go around. Okay, we're going back up now. All right, all right. So this is uh, this at least is a match for the for the Apollo mission. But I don't think they made a full orbit around after they uh, dipped in. I think uh, what happened was that their apoapsis uh, brought them back into the atmosphere. I think uh, before they left the atmosphere, their apoapsis brought them back in. That would be ideal. That that would be great if if we could get that to happen this time. But at least our uh, our orbit is tight enough so that I don't I'm not worried about the food, water, and oxygen situation now. Okay, it looks like we will be having a go around, so we'll actually orbit Earth slash Kerbin again. Going to take the liberty of time warping a bit. Actually, let me fix our orientation and then do physical time warp. Okay, now we should be in free territory here, so let's. Go around, and I hope that uh, we still hit water. Do we still hit water? Uh, not quite. Well, we might hit some desert. Could be worse. Uh, yeah, I think that's as good as we're gonna get. So here we go again, second time's the charm and everything. Uh, let's get our camera right. That's not what I meant. I think I, I just want free. There we go. Okay. Make sure we're oriented right, and yep, here we go again. Okay, music just cut out in what would have been Kerbin's uh, re-entry into the atmosphere point, but so now I feel compelled to talk a bit, but there's not much to talk about. It's all a matter of whether we survive. Uh, Jeb, Bob, and Bill. Let's hope the luck is with them here. Yeah, I had forgotten that I put a reaction wheel at the top here. So we do have a reaction wheel. That's why I'm not having to use RCS to stabilize it. I know capsules do have aerodynamics, but I have no idea what angle I'm supposed to be bringing this in at.
Well, we are definitely... Yep, as he said, we are definitely going to be hitting the surface this time. But the question is G-forces first. And when to use the parachutes. Blade shielding is fine. You can see why I said that uh, re-entry heat wasn't the big thing. We'll start hitting the really high g-forces around uh, between 30 and 40 kilometers. But it's already climbing here. Parachutes won't help that. Parachutes just add more drag, which uh, decelerates us further. And uh, really, actually, we are getting as much deceleration as we want. The deceleration is what's creating the G-force. Hmm, wonder why it's tending towards one side and uh, SAS has to pitch a bit. Is this... Oh, this RCS port is heating up. It's evidently not covered well enough. That one's fine. This one isn't. Okay, I'm gonna rotate. So that uh, we don't have RCS ports. Oh, doing that. Whew. Okay, I think we definitely lost an RCS port there. This one's fine. This one's fine. It's just that one. <sighs> okay, G-forces are climbing here. Still really don't like the way we're turning towards one side and that the pitch has to be corrected like that. Well here's that desert. And we're getting into the area where I usually get the worst G-force issues. But I think we'll manage it. I think we're in a manageable situation right now. And it's in fact decreasing now. Okay, so that's one thing. Now, uh, once we get below 25... Always have to pay attention to the Kerbals. Uh, once we get below 25 kilometers, I'll engage the drogue shoots, I think. 
still don't like this pitch and yaw situation where it seems to be tending to one side for some unspecified reasons. Obviously, one of the RCS ports is gone, but that should be the only unbalancing thing, and that shouldn't be significant. Okay, once we get 500 meters per second, I'll deploy the drogue shoots. Okay, SAS off. And I think I'll deploy the main shoots around when we get to 100 meters per second or, uh, or 5,000 meters. Okay, main parachute deployment. Now I have to hope that real shoots isn't real in a bad way. Or if I forgot to configure something that I was supposed to or do something, I hope they just work. Well, the drogue shoots have just uh, opened up fully. It's not gonna be slow enough. I know the main shoot's gonna deploy. I think it's going to Come on. Oh, there's the main shoots. Okay. All right. All right. Oh yes, uh, 8 meters per second should be safe, Bill knows it. I think we can time warp a little bit. Not a splashdown I know, so not uh, quite the same as the Apollo missions, but but there you have it uh, they wouldn't have gotten out at this point they'd be picked up by a helicopter obviously it was splashed down so I'm not gonna have uh, Jeb uh, get out and walk around but oh my word oh this is amazing um, I have no words to describe how pleased I am that this actually worked. So so yeah, I'm sure I've probably cut this into three episodes or something like that because it's been a long mission. And I thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and the other vehicle, uh, videos, which however many I've chopped this into, uh, please do press like. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, uh, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.